Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com and to a video diary in which I'm going to be using one of these things, a Latte Panda, as my only computer for an entire week. Now, in case you're not in the know, a Latte Panda is a single board computer, a bit like a Raspberry Pi, but it runs Windows 10. And in this video diary, I'm going to be pushing the Latte Panda to its limits and also answering some of the questions about the Latte Panda that people have been asking me here on YouTube. Right, it's now Saturday afternoon and I thought we'd start off this video diary with a quick look at the Latte Panda hardware, or more accurately, the two different types of Latte Panda hardware. There were two Latte Pandas and as you can see, I've got a, both of them here courtesy of my friends at a DF Robot who supplied me with both the Latte Pandas, so thanks to them for that. Now, I'm not going to go through the hardware in detail because I've done a whole video on that previously, but just to basically say this is a quad-core Atom single-board computer. It's got a 100 megabit Ethernet, it's got two USB 2 sockets, USB 3 sockets, full-size HDMI socket, and various other connectivity, 5 volt power, and a micro SD card slot. Although you don't use the micro SD card to boot it because it's on board flash memory. Now, the difference between the two pandas is that the panda we've got on the, this side, this is the standard panda, and this has 2 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of onboard flash storage. Whereas over here we have the Enhanced Panda, which has 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of onboard flash storage. Now, the other difference between them is that when you get the Enhanced Panda, the 464 version, it'll come with a 64 bit version of Windows. Whereas if you get the uh, standard Panda of a 232, you'll get a 32-bit version of Windows, more sensible for a 2 gigabytes of RAM. Now, it's also worth saying and being clear about the difference between the state of Windows when you buy Panda. You can get Windows either activated or unactivated. Now, this Panda here came with an activated version of Windows. So if we've looked at its desktop, you can see activated version of Windows, it's got a product key. But you can also buy a bit more cheaply the 232 Panda without Windows being activated. And if you buy the 464 Panda, it's never got Windows activated. And this confuses some people because they think, well, I'm buying a board without an operating system. It's not true. Pandas always come with Windows on the board. It's just it isn't always activated. But these days, Microsoft is fairly relaxed about that. Um, if we look here to the desktop of the 464 Panda, we can see it's not activated, but it runs perfectly well. You can't do things like change your, back, your desktop wallpaper, things like that, but basically you can use it perfectly well. So it doesn't really matter which Panda you get, you'll get Windows on it, and you'll be able to use it for all kinds of computing purposes. So, here I am again, and welcome to my Sunday afternoon. As you can see, I've got a computer setup here. This is the uh, setup I've got this week for testing out the Latte Panda as my only computer. You, you can see the Panda there with lots of wires around, mainly because I've got it set up so I can actually record right now. It takes a lot of extra kit in the, in the loop, as it were. And you might notice there I've got a microphone connected. So this is the same microphone I had connected to a Raspberry Pi a couple of weeks ago so I could talk to that. And here I can hopefully talk to the Latte Panda, courtesy of Cortana. So I could go, hey Cortana, what is the weather in London? Here's what I found. Deary me. Um, hey Cortana. Open Cortana settings. Sure thing. Starting my settings. And you can tell what I'm going to do now. I'm going to turn off the uh, the wake engine there just to save us a bit of resource because it's a Sunday afternoon. So the thing I've got to be doing is looking to YouTube because a video will just have gone live. So we'll launch Chrome and go to my uh, video manager. As you can see, the Latte Panda here is quite responsive. It's, you know, we're working in Windows 10 pretty much as if you're working Windows 10 in any other sort of, sort of computer. And yes, the video I was just talking about where I talked to a Raspberry Pi has been a uh, just gone up. A few of you are watching it there, that, that is good. Someone's disliked it already, they always have to. Let's look at analytics, because uh, I always flick into my analytics on a Sunday afternoon very rapidly, see what's going on. Uh, this is quite a, an intense web page for the Panda to be loading in, so it's a, a really good test of web browsing capability. But if we let that load in, the real-time analytics shows me what's going on. 
Oh yes, you can see straight away there's a little jump there where a new video has gone up. And yes, we're about to what a, just before half past two and already 1400 of you have been watching it. That's very nice of you. I find it amazing how everyone is waiting to watch the video at a two o'clock, at least two o'clock GMT on a Sunday afternoon. I know for some of you, it's early in the morning. And uh, what I'll be doing on the Panda this afternoon, I'm sure we're spending quite a bit of time going in to answer some of these comments. Yes, lots of people have been uh, leaving comments and I will of course now go in and uh, leave some comments. Um, to your comments, leave some responses. So there we are. And if you're thinking the Latte Panda looks a little bit um, not quite right, you're sitting there with lots of wires and all, all naked by itself on, on the desk, I'm going to do something about that tomorrow. So, it's now Monday afternoon and this morning I've been using the Latte Panda to prepare a lecture I'm going to be delivering tomorrow. And to do that, I actually installed Microsoft Office XP on the Panda. I connected up a DVD drive to do that. Uh, I could have used LibreOffice, but whenever you're working with a presentation, you never get things quite accurately matching up when you're using a version of LibreOffice or OpenOffice compared to PowerPoint itself. And I also installed Adobe Audition 1.5, which is an audio editor, which I think is going to work very well. I'll be looking at that a bit later in the week. Anyway, this morning I've been working on the Panda still pretty much naked with wires connected to it. And so what I want to do is to take the board as we see here and to get it into a state where I can take it out on the road tomorrow to give a lecture from this board, not just having wires hanging off a bare board. And I have had various plans over the past few months to, uh, for example, design a case for the Lassie Panda myself and to get it 3D printed using the 3D Hub service, but I haven't done that yet, so I need a more rapid solution. So what I decided to do is to take one of these this is a CD case, the sort of thing you get a 25 CDs or DVDs or Blu-ray discs in, as you know, they open up like that. And uh, I thought, could I mount a Latte Panda somehow inside here to keep it protected and give it, give it a bit of a well, protection? So what I've done is I've taken another one of these and I've started working on it. I've actually sawn off the, uh, that bit there. I've uh, used, stand in the knife, had a go, couldn't really get it right, so I actually used uh, Henry the Hacksaw in the end to get that off. And uh, I've also put some holes in this uh, little board so I can take some nuts and bolts and the uh, spaces I've got here. Uh, there's some more over there, come on. And I can put these uh, up through, if I can get it right through the holes on this thing. So this is a nice bit of DIY. I like a bit of DIY making now and then. Keeps me uh, mentally sharp as it were. So I put all those it's going to go in eventually. There we are. And hopefully I can turn that over without them falling out like that. There we are. So that's ready to take the, uh, the board. And I've got some spacers here, some little plastic spacers. And I made these spacers from a piece of plastic pipe like this. And if you're thinking, where did you get your piece of plastic pipe? It actually came from a, one of these, from an old soap dispenser. And if you look inside one of these, there is a piece of plastic pipe which you can detached like that, and now I've got a spare piece of plastic pipe to make another one in the future. Anyway, let's put on these spacers here. It was, of course, oh dear, a little bit of old soap there now, never mind, gone away. And um, put those on there. I'll just put this thing together and put the Blatte Panda on the top. And uh, there we are. We've now got the Panda mounted up. We can stick its little uh, Antenna under there. Now this is the Wi-Fi antenna. I think it'll just happily live underneath. Go underneath your little thing. Oh, there we are. That's fine. And uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. That's got the board pretty solidly mounted. You can see I've got stuck in there the, the dongle, which actually works with uh, one of my little Rai keyboards. That's what I'm going to be taking with me to control the thing tomorrow. But basically, we've got a nice secure board. It's a little bit raised off the ground, so it's got a bit of clearance there because it does get a bit uh, warm underneath. And we can put this thing on top so I can put it in a bag nice and protected to take with me tomorrow to do my lecture. Greetings. It's now Tuesday about midday, just after probably, and you join me in this great big lecture theatre, this 500-seater lecture theatre, where I've just been doing a lecture not to 500 people, but I think a couple of hundred were here today, talking all about technology and I've been controlling the Latte Panda with the, the Rye i8 to change the images on the screen. Look, it's still, still working behind me there. Isn't that marvellous? 
And uh, there's the panda, that's all just plugged in right, HDMI lead into the lecture system here, so I could actually put the images up on the screen from PowerPoint. And it worked very well indeed, the Latte Panda really performing. And it has made me think that I really should make a better case. I like the case I've made in, in, the, in the CD case, it works very well. But um, if I had a small case for the Latte Panda, if I designed something small and got, got it printed out, then I could really carry the thing around in my pocket. It's clearly easier to carry around a, a Latte Panda and a Rai i8 than it is to carry around a laptop or, or a tablet. And you've got a very small computer with very good connectivity, those full size USB ports, HDMI port. Great thing as a presentation tool. So today, big success of the Latte Panda, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. So, here we are, it's now Wednesday, and today I'm working on the Latte Panda 464 because I want to try some video editing. Yesterday I was shooting my video diary segment on my Canon XA10, and I was shooting to SD card, and specifically to a micro SD card and an adapter, so I can take that card and put it directly into the Latte Panda, which is what I've done. And as you can see here, there's that other Lexar SD card. And if we just go into the uh, structure of this, don't you just hate the file structure of AVC HD? It is absolutely bonkers, but uh, that's why I shoot ProRes most of the time, none of that rubbish going on. But we can hopefully see one of the shots I did yesterday. There we are, shot of a lecture theatre from yesterday. And uh, what I've done, as I'm sure you would guess, is to copy the files I need, the particular shots, over to the Latte Panda's storage. And as you can see, these will play perfectly well. This is a 1080p footage, and it plays perfectly nicely on the, on the Latte Panda. It's now Tuesday about midday, just after probably, and you join. This is very strange. This is me talking to me on the screen. Anyway, we've got the footage there. So I've now installed Caden Live, which is a video editor I showed you installed on Windows, free video editor, a few videos back. That'll hopefully run up. Shouldn't take too long. That app wasn't too bad to launch on, the, on this type of hardware. And we'll just set that to a, a full screen mode, I think. And we will bring in the uh, edit, which I've done of yesterday's segment. And uh, this wasn't too difficult to do. The one thing I had to do was to tell Caden Live in its settings to use proxy files for the video files. So it isn't trying to play the full video file here in the editor, because if it does, it, it's a bit, uh, it, it, the actual footage doesn't work very well. But it let use the final file to actually render the final thing. And uh, this plays okay. Isn't that marvelous? And uh, there's the panda. That's all just plugged in right, HDMI lead into the lecture system here, so I could actually... As you can see, that works absolutely fine. It hasn't been too difficult to edit in this system. I have got some uh, effects and things, things like colour correction on that shot. If I try and play with effects turned on... Look, it's still, still working behind me there. Isn't that marvellous? And It uh, struggles a little bit, so I think you have to edit without your effects and then, then turn them on. But basically, can you do video editing on a Latte Panda in Caden Live? The answer is... Yes, you can. And so I can now uh, check out this segment. Let's bring some proper options up there. I think I've set up the name already for that. Not exporting audio. I'll do audio as a separate file, which I'll work on tomorrow. And I'll render this thing out to a file. Uh, do I want to overwrite it? Yes, I do. There we are. And uh, we will uh, let the thing render out. That'll take a little bit of time. I imagine the, uh, the Latte Panda will take a Little while to render out the video file. It'll tell us in a second just how long. It's about what one minute twenty, and it's going to render it out in. Come on, give us a number. There we are. It says twenty six minutes. So that sounds quite a long time, doesn't it? But it's going to take take a while to render out the file. So we'll let it get on with that, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Right. It's now a Thursday morning, and. As all week, I've been working on various things in Google Docs. That's hardly a surprise for you. Here, I've been getting some data together for a, a video on a SSD life expectancy, which I hope you'll have seen by the time you see this. It's going to be a bit of a rush getting it up. But uh, something more exciting going on is I'm going to be doing a little bit of audio editing today. I'm here running Adobe Audition, which I installed earlier in the week. And this file is actually the sound for the sequence we had in the lecture theatre on Tuesday, the sound I exported out of Caden Live yesterday, which hopefully will work. Greetings. It's now Tuesday about midday, just after probably... Which is OK, but it's not a brilliant waveform. It was a very rapid shoot on Tuesday. Everything wasn't absolutely fine. So uh, first of all, I'll go and do a bit of work on the amplitude of that wave. 
Um, how much can we boost it? Probably about 3 dB would be sensible, wouldn't it? And uh, it seems the Latte Panda is taking this in its stride. I'm working on the 232 simply because I installed the software on this machine really by accident. We'll do a bit of noise reduction there, I think. Uh, effects, noise reduction, capture noise reduction profile. Don't display that again. Oh, I do hate the way it takes you so long to configure software to be usable. But um, that's life, isn't it? We all get used to our computers and how they're configured. And when you get a clean copy of Windows 10, and it is an absolute mess, isn't it? Let's be honest. Anyway, um, noise reduction there, which um, I think that's going to be way too high down to about there. I guess normally about 50. I'll just take a little bit of the, the noise out of the file. And it's now a lot cleaner. Greetings. It's now Tuesday about midday, just after probably. But there's still a lot I could do to this. This is a, that itself could be booted a little bit, couldn't it? So uh, we can go in and do a lot more work on this, which I will uh, do. I normally have a lot of keystrokes set up to automate this sort of stuff for me, but uh, um, haven't got that yet. But uh, this will start to work out. Greetings. It's now Tuesday about midday, just after. So I will uh, work on my audio file, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. So, we've reached Friday, and I said I'd really pushed the Latte Panda this week, and as you can see, I'm back on the Latte Panda 464, and what I've actually decided to do is to install the Lightwave 3D modeling package I use for 3D modeling. And uh, as you can see, this, this works perfectly well. We can do all the, uh, the normal light wavy things and uh, you know, operate on the polygons and points and do sub patch surfaces and all this exciting stuff. And it, it works. And uh, I've actually tried loading in some more complicated objects. This is the uh, model I made of the, uh, let's take that back to the texture, model that I made of my uh, Custard Pi single board computer, which uh, let's just flick that up. And um, as you can see, this is very responsive. There's no doubt you could actually do really serious 3D modeling work on a Latte Panda. And I've also got running here the, uh, the renderer for Lightwave. Now this is struggling a little bit more. You'll see it goes to uh, putting in bounding boxes when we're moving around. But again, it absolutely works. And uh, if I press to render this shot, it'll render with some um, overlay because this has not been uh, all installed properly this package. I haven't put all the license details in because it's only, only a test, but it does work. Let's just uh, give it a second to render that. And uh, there we are, it's done it. So the Latte Panda has managed to render out a frame admittedly at half resolution, just to save a bit of time, from the opening sequence of Explaining Computers videos. And this you know, really impresses me. We can see that you could use the Latte Panda to do lots of really serious computing work. You know, this week I've been doing all the stuff you'd expect, using the uh, web browser to do things in things like Google Docs and checking email and using things like LibreOffice and PowerPoint. But it also managed to work in terms of video editing, audio editing, and here, even running a high-end 3D modeling package. On the end of the box of a Latte Panda, DF Robot write a Windows 10 computer for everything. And as we've seen in this video, that's a pretty good description. The Latte Panda is powerful enough as a single board computer to do all kinds of things, not just web work and office work and that type of stuff, but it can also do things like audio editing, even video editing, and even some 3D modeling. Now, the final comment I want to make is that many of you will be saying, why is it a Windows 10 computer? Why do they write that on the box? Surely it's just an x86 computer. You can install what you like on it. Why aren't you running Linux on it, you fool, etc. And I think it's worth noting that you know, the Latte Panda is really, it is a machine intended to run Windows and Windows 10. It is tricky to put Linux on it. The machine doesn't have a standard bootloader like many Atom-based computers, which means you can't straightforwardly just plug in a USB drive and boot from that and, and install Linux. It can be done. People have put Linux on the Latte Panda, but it's tricky and you need the right drivers and that kind of thing, and they aren't readily available. So the Latte Panda really is a Windows single board computer, and it excels, I think, in the thing it's intended to do. So, that's the end of my Latte Panda week. I have enjoyed using this thing for a week, or the two Latte Pandas this week. Particularly been nice to do a lot of Windows computing on completely silent hardware. 
That says the latte panda does get slightly hot, very hot actually underneath, hasn't given me any trouble this week, but I might in a future video come back to the latte panda and look at cooling solutions. But now that's it for this time. If you've enjoyed this video diary, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.